Leonard Euler. It's not Euler. Pet peeve. That's just wrong, too. It's Euler. Okay, his name starts with an E, so it's called lowercase e. Never capital E, always lowercase e after Euler. Interesting thing about Euler, he has discovered so many things. He's got a couple of formulas named after him, a constant named after him, but he kept discovering so many things that, you know, the community thought, like, they, they realized everything is being called Euler's this and Euler's that. So they're like, okay, we're going to stop naming things after you now. So they started naming things after the second person who came up with them, you know, like the runner up. I know. Well, but he's got, he's got so many things to his name. Okay, so if any of this ever comes up and you're on Jeopardy, you have to give me like on-air credit. Okay? So... <laughs> <laughs> huh? That's call me. Any math question, you can call me. Yeah. I'm sure that I'm sure they'll be okay with that. Okay. So. Well, first we have to learn all about Euler. So here we go. We're going to graph some of these. So we can use E just like any other number. Um, so we see E to the X all the time. So we're going to graph some um, equations with the E's. Um, and we're going to talk about asymptote, domain range, blah, blah, blah. For simplicity, we're going to use E to be approximately equal to 2.7. Okay, this should have a double bar. So every time you see E, you just know it's two point seven. Right. Plug in. It's technically yeah. It's it's better known as two point seven one eight, but you know for us for this room, two point seven. Okay. So before you start plugging things in, what's the asymptote here? Y equals zero. The y-intercept, e to the zero, which is one. Nothing has changed. E is still a number. E to the 0 is 1, so it's 0 and 1. Okay, now, here we're going to do E to the negative 1, E to the 0, E to the 1, E to the 2. Okay, suppose this is on a quiz or on a test. Save yourself some time. E to the 0, I know, is 1. E to the 1, I know, is 2.7. So don't go plugging that stuff in. Don't waste time. E squared is what, 7.4? Yeah. Yeah. It's a good thing to know that because it comes up all the time. Did you actually plug it in? Yeah. Okay. Don't take my work for things. No, I guess Which we can round to 7.4. And what's E to the minus 1? This is also 1 over E. 0, huh? 0.4. Oh, no. 1.03. You know, you know what? So rather than using 2.7 for E, take a look here. When you do second and the button next between the 7 and the 4 right here, it, you have E. E to the minus 1 is 0 0.4. Second, LN. You see the red button here. Right hand. Okay, look, guys. Y is less than the asymptote or greater than the asymptote. Since there is a positive in front of e to the x, it's y is greater than zero. So now, here is my asymptote. Um, so at negative 1, y is 0.4. At 0, y is 1. At 1, it's 2.7. And then 7.4. OK? All right. So, 
So now I'm going to ask you guys to do this one. You're going to put in the asymptote and the y-intercept, fill in the chart, and graph. Okay? And I'll stop this for a little bit. The range always has to be y is greater than or less than the asymptote. Okay? Fantastic. So the next one, before you graph, let's just work with me on this for a minute. What's the asymptote? Zero. zero. What's the y-intercept? Negative one. Negative one. So zero comma negative one. And then here, what's the domain? All reals. All reals. And what about the range? Greater than zero. Are you sure about that? Zero. Thank you. Less than zero. Y is less than zero because there is a negative out front. Okay, so now graph it. I'll pause this for a few minutes again. For this one, right, we're going to get negative e to the negative 2, 0 to negative e squared. Okay, I'm sorry. Negative e to the 4. So negative e to the 0 is minus 1. Below that, it's negative 7.4. And what's e to the 4? And what's negative e to the minus 2? Like that? Yeah. Okay. So, asymptote. At negative 2. At negative 1, we're at negative 2. Uh, 0 at minus 1. <clears throat> oh, sorry. 1 at negative 7.4. 2 at, you know, it's, it's too far down. And like I was saying before, if you have three good plottable points, then you're okay. Okay? All right. So, this one here, what's going to be the asymptote? It's going to be negative 4. Tell me again. Negative 4. Tell me again. Positive Tell me again. Oh. Zero. Y, y equals negative 4. Oh. Thank you. That's what I'm looking for. Oh, y intercept. No, y equals negative 5. Yeah. So, yes. so it's negative e to the 0 minus 4, negative 1 minus 4. So, negative e to the minus 1 minus 4. Domain is? Y. Less than. Good. Okay. So let me show you. We did this chart, right? Yes. Let me show you another way to put in these values. Press y equals. Let's graph this guy. Negative e to the x. Nice. Correct. Zoom six. Here's what I want you to do. I'm going to show you the quickest way to fill in this chart. No, even, yeah, trace. Negative one, negative 4.4. Zero. In trace, yeah, you could, I like this better. In trace mode, right, and then 1, and then 2. You didn't put the X where it's supposed to go. X. You're missing an X. Go back to y equals and see if you have exactly the graph that you should have, the equation that you should have. So, at negative 4, we have an asymptote. 
and then I've got these points. So at negative 1, and then at negative 5, and then negative 6.7, and then it's like 11 something. So now let me show you something else. Suppose you're working on your own graph paper. There is no law that says the x and y axes have to be in the center of your page. There is no law that says that. So if your asymptote is at negative 4 and you know the graph goes below that, what I would do is I would put, oh, I can't show it here, but um, I would put my, hang on. If I were graphing this, what I would do is I would put my axis up there. And even more, right, I would go by twos. So this is negative 2, negative 4, 6, 8, 10, and so on. So now um, I could graph even better. So at x equals 2, we're at negative 11. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Waste so you actually get a nicer looking graph. It doesn't make sense. So that's what it would look like. It doesn't make sense to do it like I had before, right? Where you have your x-axis over there, and then, you know, the whole gra grid is empty, and you just have a graph in the bottom third of your, right? So that's not, that's not the way it's supposed to look. So, um, so if you look at this, Right, the way I have it, two thirds of my grid is empty. That's not the professional way to draw the graphs. You really want to change it so that what you drew takes up the majority of the space. Okay? All right. The homework for this is the exponential graph handout. Um, my handouts are named exactly as is shown here. So if you're ever absent and you want to go on haiku, make sure you follow, um, you know, like you match name with name, okay?